Hey everybody, it's Mark from Back of Mobile. This is our second video on the BlackBerry Priv for its Canadian launch November 6, 2015. So we're going to jump in. We're going to go through the setup of the Priv right out of the box. So let's get started. When you first fire up the Priv, this will be your welcome screen. From here you'll pick your language, whether it's United Kingdom, English South Africa, etc. We're going to go with English US and we're going to go next. Now we're going to skip the SIM card and everything. We're not going to open the actual uh, trays on this device just yet. Um, so we're going to skip through, but we're just going to go through screen for screen for screen, give you an idea of what to expect when you're setting up your Priv for the first time. So if you had a SIM card in, you would actually see a SIM card. It would start to connect to the network. We're going to skip. Here's where we search for Wi-Fi. Again, if you want to do a setup over Wi-Fi, cut down on the data usage for your plan, etc. This is where you'll want to set up Wi-Fi. We're going to skip. Nice, all those reminders. This is where date and time is set up for you. And if you've got a SIM card in, this should be set up automatically for you, and it should adjust daylight savings time. In here, you'll put a name, alias, usually first name, last name. Next screen, we go in. This is where you have your screen protection. So if you want to set up a pin code, uh, gesture, etc. Uh, for Android users, you'll be pretty, uh, pretty used to this. Uh, for BlackBerry 10 users that are switching, uh, this is an option for Android where you can actually go through and set up gestures as in patterns. You can set a picture, in which case you'll knock special areas within the uh, screen itself. You'll have a pin or a password. So just for simplicity's sake, we're going to set up a pin. In here you'll see options. This is where you'll go through, set the pin to start the device or, you know, um, well, again, no thanks. You can just skip through. We're going to set it for starting the device. And we're just going to set it up as, uh, we'll do a uh, BACA, 2252. Two, two. It'll ask us to confirm it, 2252. Two, two. Yeah. And if it was my phone, you can guarantee I'll have changed that. All right. So now the notification bar. So on Android devices, you get a notification tray. This one's not fully set up yet, but it'll come down from the top. So when your device is locked, what do you see in a notification bar? All of the content? hide some of the sensitive details, that will usually just give you a header and some minute pieces of information or no notifications at all. We're going to leave it as the first option, show all notification content, and we'll hit next. Now in here, and I usually like to say, don't skip right through this, don't leave everything checked. If you're a person that's very critical about security, sensitive information, carefully read through what your device has access to, and that would be going forward for any applications or anything down the road. Again, we're going to leave everything toggled because once we're done our setup, we'll end up eventually resetting this device. So we're going to click Next. And this is your typical agreement. What's on the device? What do you use? Basically, you have to agree, <laughs> even though it gives you the option to opt out. So we're just going to click Next. And yeah, we've read it. Thanks. BlackBerry Insider. This is if you want to provide feedback, uh, emails, you know, that type of stuff. We'll skip it for now. Diagnostics, whether you're a fan of helping them with any crashes or any dump information. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll leave it on for now. Content transfer. This is if you're transferring from another device. This is pictures, videos, etc. So we'll come back. We'll probably do another video on this at a later date. And learn as you go. These are your help tutorials. And we'll click finish. And voila, you are into your BlackBerry Priv. Now, you'll notice on here that the device is set up. You have some information on the shortcuts. Now we have our notification bar. You notice it's running Android 5.1.1. Marshmallow will be available for the device at a later date. Uh, BlackBerry is already committed to this. For Android users, these layouts will seem very stock Android. You should have seen this on an HTC, a Nexus, anything that you might be using. It's very, very, um, very similar to everything that's been released. I like it, the experience on the Priv is very akin to stock Android. It's great. The unit itself, very fast. So we're going to go in, we're going to hit the home button. And just in our original demo video, we were showing BlackBerry Hub, although the icon has changed. We've got our Google Now, uh, quick launch, and our universal search on the BlackBerry. So that's pretty, uh, pretty neat that you can actually go in and launch those features. Now again, we have yet to set up accounts and we'll probably come in and show a BlackBerry Hub video at a later date, show you how notifications are set. BlackBerry has confirmed that for this particular device, because the quick launch takes you into the hub, 
there is no peak feature. And on a BlackBerry, that would be typically moving up and then sliding to the right, which would glide you into the hub, as in, or in essence, the peak, looking at what's available. Um, so that does not exist on this particular unit. Now, we had a question originally as to how does the on-screen keyboard work? So we're going to go in and we're actually going to demonstrate that for you. We're going to open up notes. And with that, once you have this open, you'll notice you have a BlackBerry keyboard. And we can simply just start typing. So I can say, hello, and flick. And we'll go, how? And again, I'm doing this off-center. So I do apologize for my slowness. You know, R... You, I mean, Flick is great. If you've ever used it on a BlackBerry 10 device, it exists in Android. So we're just going to slide open the keyboard at this point. Now, you'll notice when I did that, it actually flipped to the tactile keyboard. And, uh, you know, then you can start typing again. So with that, obviously, you're just going to type everything, space as you need to. You can actually swipe along. So as we mentioned in our original video, the keyboard actually allows you to uh, interact with it, much like a touchpad on a, on a mouse. On a laptop, it's uh, capacitive, it's great, biometric rather, if you prefer. And, uh, you know, the unit has some great, great uh, operational standpoints. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be releasing some more videos touching on different aspects of the software, things like the hub, etc. So please, stay tuned. Thanks for joining us.